Hello kids, welcome to Zenon Academy Online. Today we are going to do parallel lines and transversal for SSC class 8 Maharashtra book. Let's start with it. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that always stay same distance apart and never meet. So suppose there are two lines M and N. Now these two lines are at same distance apart. The distance between these two points and the distance between these two points are equal. All the points, whether this or this, always the distance will be equal. They are same distance apart and they never meet. What do you mean by never meet? That means if we extend these lines, then they will never meet at each other because again they will be at same distance. They will never intersect. Suppose there are two lines like this, L and C. Now the distance between the two points here and the two points here, they are not same. They are not any points, the perpendicular distance. Suppose I draw a perpendicular here and two points here. Suppose I draw a perpendicular with this line and the two points over here. The distance is not same. This distance is not equal to this distance. So if we extend this line, and if we extend this line in a straight direction, they meet here. This is called point of intersection. Okay. So if they meet at this point, that means they are meeting somewhere. If they are extended, that means they are not parallel lines. Because parallel lines do not intersect. Now let's study about transversal. Transversal lines is a line that crosses two or more other lines. So suppose this point, this is L, this is M and N are two parallel lines and L is a transversal. So this point where it is meeting, L is meeting M over here. Suppose this is O and N over here. Suppose this is P. So this transversal is crossing two lines at point O and P. So this line, the line which intersects two or other lines is called a transversal. Now it can be two or more. So suppose M and P are three parallel lines or sorry, three, any other lines. It is not necessarily parallel. And L is a transversal here because it intersects at these three Now let's see angle pairs formed by a transversal. Interior angle and exterior angles are formed by a transversal on two parallel lines. So there are there are eight angles total form. One, two, seven, and eight are called exterior angles. And the angles which are formed inside these parallel lines, three, four, 5 and 6. They are called as interior angles. So angle 1, angle 2, angle 7 and angle 8 are exterior angles. And angle 3, angle 4, angle 5 and angle 6 are interior angles. So there are total 8 angles formed by a transversal on two parallel lines. Corresponding angles. When two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, the pair of angles formed on the same side of transversal and which are of same size are called as corresponding angles. Now we have to see the position of the angles over here. They are on the same side. Suppose this angle, let's mark it as angle 1 and this angle as angle 2. So they are on the same side of transversal and the uh, direction of the parallel lines, suppose two parallel lines, the direction of the parallel lines is also same. So they are of same size and on the same side. Okay. Similarly here, let's mark it as a, this as angle 3 and angle 4. They are on the same side and the direction of the parallel lines are on the same side. So these, the size of these angles become 
Suppose this is 5 and 6 over here and 7 and 8. So all these pairs, angle 1 and angle 2, they are equal to each other. Angle 3 will be equal to angle 4. Angle 5 will be equal to angle 6. Angle 7 will be equal to angle 8. Now let's see alternate angle. So alternate angle are the angles on the opposite side of the transversal and the opposite direction of parallel line. So alternate angle can be interior alternate angle and exterior alternate angle. So here these are the interior angles, angle 3 and angle 6. And they are because they are alternate so they are also called as alternate interior angles. Now and similarly angle 4 and angle 5 will be another pair of alternate interior angles. Now these angles, angle 1, 2, 7 and 8, they are on the exterior side of the parallel line. So they are known as alternate exterior angles. Angle 1 will be equal to angle 8 and angle 2 and 7. So by the property of alternate angle, these angles, the pair of alternate angles will be congruent to each other. The properties of angle formed by two parallel lines and a transversal. Now first we will see corresponding angles. So as I said corresponding angles are equal to each other. Here there are four pairs of corresponding angles. Angle 1 is equal to angle 5. Angle 2 is equal to angle 6. Similarly, angle 3 is equal to angle 7. And angle 4 is equal to angle 8. Next property is pair of alternate angles are congruent. So again, there will be four pairs, alternate interior angles, that is angle 3 and angle 6, angle 4 and angle 5. So these are the pair of alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Similarly, angle 4 will be equal to angle 5. And here, angle 1 is equal to angle 8. Why? Because they are pair of alternate exterior angles. And angle 2 will be equal to angle 7. Then we will have pair of same side interior angles. A pair of same side interior angles, they are not equal but they are supplementary to each other. So, Interior angles are 3 and 5, now same side. So they will be on the same side of transversal. So angle 3 plus angle 5. They are pair of supplementary means their sum is 180 degree. They are equal to 180 degree. And angle 4 and angle 6. Angle 4 plus angle 6 becomes 180 degree. Now, solve some examples now. Examples are taken from your practice set also. Uh, in the adjoining figure, line L is parallel to line M. And P is a transversal. So there are two parallel lines over here and P is the transversal. So one angle is given. Angle, this one. So let's name this angle as X. Okay. Uh, by naming angle, it becomes easy for writing. So we should always name the angles x. Also we can write if we mark this as point of intersection then o and suppose this as a, a y then we can write angle p o y is equal to 40 degree. But instead of writing p o y I can also write as measure of angle x is equal to 140 degree. Now I have to find angle a and b. So if you know angle POY is 140 degree, what can be angle A? Since angle A and angle X, 
are on the same line so they are angle on the straight line so their sum will be 180 degree we can write the reason as linear pair because the angles are on the same line they form a linear pair so their sum is 180 degree so if i know the value of angle any one angle i can find another so we know the value of x over here so the value of x is 140 right here we don't know the value of a so we'll just write as angle a equal to 180 now when this 140 is in the addition over here when it goes on the other side of equal to it will become subtraction so 180 minus 140 becomes 40 degrees so angle a is 40 degrees now we have to find angle b but angle a and angle b will be equal to each other why because they are pair of alternate interior angles we have to write the reasons always that is very important in all geometry questions especially when you are proving something so alternate interior angles so angle b is equal to 40 degrees okay let's see next question example 2 in the adjoining figure line m and n are parallel to each other so m and n are two parallel lines again p is the transversal we have to find the value of x now there are uh, two angles 3x and x they have given two angles tx and x they have given a relationship they have not given us any 40 uh, any figure any number so we can write angle 3x and angle x what can what can be the sum of these angles it's 180 degree why because they are interior angles and we have read the property same side uh, angle in interior angles are supplementary to each other interior angles on same side are supplementary So now 3x plus x becomes 4x equal to 180 degree. Now 4 is in multiplication with x. So x uh, 4 will go in division when it goes on the other side. And x here becomes 45 degree. So we have to just find x. If they have told to find us 3x also, then what we will just simply multiply 3 into x. 3 into 45 which becomes 135 degree but this part is not needed here we have to find only x okay if you have any doubts please do write in the comment section let's see this example this is a little bit different there are three parallel lines here p l and q p l and q and there are two transversal here. Let's name it as M and N. So this transversal M makes an angle with parallel line P. This one, the measure is given as 40. Let's write it as A. And here maybe uh, the line N and Q makes an angle. Suppose let's write it as B, this angle. Okay. So it's given angle A is 40 degree. Now we have to find the measure of angle X. So angle X is this full angle. Let's name the half angle as Y. This one. And the another half as Z. Okay. So we can write here angle X is equal to angle Y plus angle Z. Now what we will do is. Here we can write this also. Angle equal to 40. Angle B is equal to 30 x is equal to y plus z now let's find angle y and z so that when we make a sum of these two angles we can find angle x so angle y will be equal to angle a because they are alternate interior angles
Now, similarly, angle Z will be equal to angle B. Again, the same reason, alternate interior angles. So now we know angle Y. We know, uh, we can write here maybe angle A equal to angle Y equal to 40 degrees. And similarly here also 40 degrees. So now we know angle Y is equal to 40 degree. Angle Z equal to 40 degree. So angle X becomes angle Y plus angle Z is equal to 40 plus 40 to 80 degrees. Okay, so we got the sum of X and X as Y plus Z and we got the answer as 80. So angle X is equal to 80 degrees. So I hope you understood all the concepts and example questions very well. If you have any doubts, please comment below. Like this video if you understood everything and please share and subscribe. Also, we'll be doing a next video on indices and cube roots. So keep watching Zenith Academy online. Thank you, my dear students. Thank you once again. See you soon.